Hello again and welcome to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers, a very special guest this week, and uh, I know you're going to look forward to this one. Yes, we're pleased to be talking with the Oklahoma Secretary of State, Susan Savage. Uh, we'll bring her on in just a few minutes. Uh, I was just talking with you before we got started that the two Secretaries of State that anybody in Oklahoma care about are our own Secretary of State, uh, uh, Susan Savage, and the United States Secretary of State, Condoleezza Rice, both women. Mm -hmm in these important positions. These positions ha are very different in the duties and scope, but, but nevertheless each important. And uh, today we're going to be talking a little bit more about what is the Secretary of State's job, uh, what does she uh, do, what uh, kind of responsibilities does she have, and uh, should she uh, be an elective, should it be an elective office or an appointed office? Yeah, the past, the present, the future, it's all interesting when you're talking about Susan Savage, and we look forward to their interview. There's a lot. We'll be right back. For one Oklahoma-based company, success didn't happen overnight. Initially, the days were long, 80-hour weeks common. As we grew, we wanted to share our success, and the ideals of corporate and civic responsibility found a welcome home. Today, we're the largest investor in the Sooner State, and a source for exciting, new, high-quality jobs. We're Chesapeake Energy, committed to building a better Oklahoma. All children deserve a life of hope and love. But sometimes they experience a life of pain, neglect, and abuse. When that happens, each child deserves all the quality, assistance, and representation that can be offered in our legal system. For more information, call 23CHILD. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children, helping to bring hope and love back to the lives of abused children. Hi, I'm Court Diffie. With all of the change that has taken place in the car industry in the past decade here in Oklahoma, it's hard to find a family-run business anymore. One of the things that makes us different is that if you visit any one of our three locations, you're going to find one of our family members there ready to help you. Does that really make any difference? We really believe it does. So I invite you to come out and experience the Diffie family difference and decide for yourself. Welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett and Kent Myers. Kent's going to introduce today's guest. We are very pleased today to have the Honorable Susan Savage, the Secretary of State of the State of Oklahoma, joining us. Uh, Susan uh, grew up in Tulsa. That's correct. Uh, has a bachelor's degree from Arcadia University in Pennsylvania. Was uh, mayor of Tulsa for 10 years, three terms, th elected three times, the first woman mayor of Tulsa, and uh, retired on her own terms. Uh, which is uh, sometimes unusual for mayors. <laughs> sure. Uh, in 2003, she was appointed by Governor Henry as the Secretary of State of the State of Oklahoma, has been serving since that time. This is her first visit to the verdict. To Susan, thank you for joining us. I'm delighted to be here. Thank you. Let's back up. You had served as Tulsa. You were no longer the mayor, and then you have this opportunity to be Secretary of State. That had to be a tough decision. Obviously an honor to be considered, yes. but a tough decision nonetheless. I'll tell you, Mayor, it was a thrill because um, when the governor, and at the time the governor-elect called and said, would you be part of my administration, I thought, gosh, you know, I, 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 um, I I've never worked as part of a gubernatorial administration. I think this represents a wonderful opportunity. I love public service, which has always been my calling since I got out of um, got out of college. But actually, it's brought me here to Oklahoma City as a resident because I did move. I tried the commute thing for six months and decided I like to live where I work. So I made the choice to move here to Oklahoma City, and I love it, and I love my work, and. The service part of it is really the extension of the service from serving a community, my hometown, to now serving the entire state. And so it takes me into large, small, um, uh, diverse communities all around the state on the governor's behalf. And um, I find, as, as we know from our service in our respective 
cities that people essentially want the same kinds of things. They want their children well educated, they want good jobs, they want safe neighborhoods and safe streets, they want to be safe in their homes, outside of their homes, um, they want to worship where they uh, have a place of choice to worship, they want to recreate, and they want to give to their communities. And you see that all around this great state and it's been so much fun and such an honor to serve with the governor in that capacity. Susan, we uh, know from uh, taking a little, uh, doing a little homework that your position was created uh, at the time of statehood and it's gone through uh, several changes since then, but uh, tell our viewers generally what are the duties of the Secretary of State? Secretary of State is the repository of every record that is part of the state of Oklahoma's um, business enterprise, legislative enterprise, judicial enterprise. We, we contain in our database, in our record bank, um, every oath of office, every piece of legislation, every resolution, every business that is doing business in Oklahoma is on file in the Secretary of State's office. It sounds a little dry, but um, in this era as we approach our centennial, I will tell you that uh, one of the members of my staff has been doing some research. We also care for the Constitution, the state's Constitution and the seal, but we came across um, a position paper for women's suffrage during um, the debate here in Oklahoma in about 1918, 1919, and it was a position paper. So we're now working with the Historical Society to cull some of those kinds of records from our base, many of which are handwritten, to uh, use, for the Historical Society to use as part of a centennial e exhibition. So sounds a little dry on one hand, but the enormity of the work that goes on in doing the state's business for the, from the private sector as well as the public sector requires there to be a place to keep those records and we house those records. And um, just in the last year and a half to two years have automated most of them. So if you were doing business with the Secretary of State's office, you can go to our Sooner Access system and do your business filings, uh, uh, apply to become a notary, you can check on name availability for your business. Uh, a lot of the transactions we can do um, electronically, which has, has uh, enabled us to be, become far more efficient. Actually, the numbers of people in the office from the time I took office until now have actually declined because we're using the technology that enables us to be more efficient. What's the most difficult thing you do or are going to do? What's the biggest challenge you have as Secretary of State? You know, I think on the, on, the, on the agency side of it, because um, I serve in a dual capacity as far as the head of the agency and um, then as a member of the governor's cabinet. On the agency side, I think because so many of our businesses are regulated by the state in so many different ways, Many of our state agencies, from the Tax Commission to the Secretary of State to the regulatory, um, environmental regulatory requirements, oftentimes there is not a lot of um, interaction back and forth. Now, just in the, in the last year, our, our give and take with the Tax Commission, for example, has dramatically improved because we can send them information about different, and they send us information if someone hasn't paid their taxes, then obviously they can't renew their business license. But keeping our records current, ensuring that we process those records in a timely and very accurate and very efficient manner for the business owner. Because if we drag our heels, and last week um, uh, an issue came to my attention where we had substantially dragged our heels for several weeks. Um, my approach to that was to, to number one, fix the problem, and secondly, go back and figure out where did our process break down and how do we improve it? So um, I think it is where we have oftentimes the greatest impact is ensuring that we meet the requirements that state law places on the business sector and we do those in a way that is very timely, very efficient and very accurate.
You mentioned that you're sort of the repository for, for mm -hmm. all sorts of documents through the years. Uh, how much of that is still on paper? How much is, is transitioning to information technology? And I assume you have a fairly large staff to be able to deal with all of those issues. There are about 32 uh, full-time staff members in the Secretary of State's office. And, and that's at the Capitol building? That's at the Capitol building. We do have some office space in the Will Rogers building, but most of our staff is in the Capitol. Um, but about 12 of those people actually work on these business systems. Now, when I took office, when the governor appointed me, uh, the Secretary of State's office had begun a process under former Secretary of State Tom Cole and through Secretary of State Mike Hunter to begin to automate the systems. Um, it was something many Secretaries of, Secretary of State's offices were doing. We had entered into a contract. When I took office, we were about 18 months behind the implementation. Um, my staff advised me that we were being um, had some problems with our contractor. So we sat down with the state auditor, with the attorney general, reviewed the contract, and um, compelled a higher level of interest from the contractor <laughs> to ensure that the work be began to meet its schedule, its timelines. And for about six months, we ran parallel systems, which really got us behind <laughs> and really got people yeah. aggravated. So I've had just about everything said to me that could be said from the standpoint of of um, uh, aggravating the public. But on the other side of that now, we're into the mode of um, taking a look at how well do our systems serve the business cl client and are there ways to improve. And one of the things that we've talked about doing is forming some focus groups with, we have large numbers of attorneys who use our services, large numbers of business people, to get some feedback from the automated systems. Uh, but there. Every year when I go before the legislature to talk about our budget, and most of what we do is fee-based, um, I have the opportunity to say we have increased the numbers of transactions tenfold that we can now process by virtue of the automation. But almost everything we do is now automated. Now, on the receiving end of that, many um, county clerk's offices and some of the more rural areas of the county don't have computer systems so we cannot transmit things electronically we have to um, do so just through the mail but most of what we are required by law to transmit we try to do electronically it saves us time and money susan savage is the secretary of state she's this week's guest on the verdict we'll be right back The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record, since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. And Blankenship has stopped at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. Leaving it fourth and seven on the Tiger for the six-yard line. 38 seconds on the clock. The Tigers have no choice but to go. Ah. Wiggins in to do the kicking. Here's the snap. R.S.M. McGladry. We're accountants. We do taxes, business valuations, estate planning, and consulting. And we're right here in Oklahoma working with the owners of small and medium-sized businesses. Steve Wilsey and Stuart Meyer have the resources and the experience. R.S.M. McGladry. In Oklahoma City, the phone number is 405-843-5311. Welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett, Kent Myers, and our guest, Secretary of State Susan Savage. Susan, you're also a member of the Governor's Cabinet. Mm -hmm. How does that differ from just your normal duties as Secretary of State? Mayor, it's, it's really quite interesting because it's um, a great deal more diverse. Um, the Governor has directed uh, my time and um, the knowledge that I bring into this job into dealing with everything from um, uh, municipal issues to uh, representing him. Uh, just recently I attended the interfaith dinner here in Oklahoma City as, and, and presented a proclamation on the governor's behalf. I work on educational issues during the legislative session. I'm part of 
of his internal staff team who takes a look at the legislation he's asked to sign and we make a recommendation. Um, I'm part of uh, certainly any, any of the international work that he is doing, both from a diplomatic side, because I am asked as a Secretary of State always to meet with uh, our foreign visitors, and I often do so on the Governor's behalf as well, if he is unavailable. I, I, go, I travel from schools to chambers of commerce to rotary clubs throughout the state, and um, speak on the governor's behalf, speak on the state's behalf, and uh, do so because I love it and it's a great opportunity for me. So it's quite varied. And as I say, I work on legislative, international, um, educational matters, um, any kind of, of uh, uh, local government issue I'm often called in to, to assist because I have a lot of background in that yes, area. Yes, you do. We've had a number of people on the show, and I've always wanted to ask this and I always forget to do it. We've had a number of people who've been on the governor's cabinet. I've always wanted to ask, does the cabinet ever actually meet? Oh, sure. In fact, we met um, just a couple of weeks ago, and at those meetings, the governor is present, present and the chief of staff, the, um, the other cabinet, cabinet officials, and we go through a list of issues. Um, they may, depending upon uh, what the governor is addressing at that particular time, two, um, two meetings ago, we, we addressed specifically some of the Katrina relief efforts that were underway in the state and um, the adju adjutant general um, Bud Wyatt was there and went through a discussion of what the National Guard was doing. Um, Howard Hendrick, the Secretary of, of Human Services, was there to talk about the coordination between um, health, human services, and local governments for some of the, the enormous needs that uh, the people at Camp Gruber had. So it was an opportunity for us to come up to speed as well as to share information about what we might need to be doing. We were looking at workforce development issues um, in terms of, of how long were people going to be in our state, how many were going, that was the time when we thought we might have as many as 10,000 coming into the state mm -hmm. of Oklahoma. How would we get them employed and uh, trained and, and were there some things that we could be doing? So the cabinet meets, um, the governor's marching orders to all of his cabinet officials uh, are very clear. Uh, leverage your resources with one another, work in a collaborative way, work in a bipartisan way, work with integrity, and to the highest ethical standards and um, uh, share information and work towards a common goal. One kind of related question I wanted to ask you, uh, of course you have your own office, you have your duties as a cabinet member, are there other boards and agencies of mm -hmm. the state that you're affiliated with in some way? Um, I also have three agencies um, that on a on policy matters I'm responsible for overseeing. I don't handle their day-to-day -day operations at all because they're very well managed. The Council on Judicial Complaints, the Ethics Commission, and the um, State Board of Election. And um, so those are my agencies. In terms of other boards, by virtue of the position of Secretary of State, not specifically assigned, but I represent the governor um, on the Southern Regional Education Board, for example, which is a, a uh, uh, an amalgamation of 16 southern states. I'm on that executive committee on his behalf. Uh, work, do all of um, his work with the National Governors Association, the staff level work that needs to go on with the other Washington representatives. Um, we deal with everything from transportation in, in the committee, the governor chairs, he's chair this year of the Economic Development and Commerce Committee for the National Governors Association. So we deal with rail, um, transportation, um, uh, certainly any kind of um, job growth and development, and a variety of policies that have an impact on state governments. The, the, the states are very sensitive, as the local governments are, to the preemption of um, their rights and their authority by the federal government. So we, we take a look at those issues. All of us have been working very, very diligently on the cost issues that Katrina and Rita uh, and the hurricanes have had an impact on states' budgets, from Medicaid to um, how we're going to address the, the low-income heating assistance program this summer. The governor has been very active in, in that area. So um, I help manage a lot of that information for him because there's an enormous amount of it, and it keeps me very current on what's happening at the federal as well as 
and other best practices in states because like cities, we um, at the state level, we share information through the National Association of Secretaries of State also. At one time, this was an elected position that mm -hmm. you hold and now it's an appointed position. Mm -hmm. Yeah, do you have a preference? Do you have any well, guidance for the future? I have a great preference right now because <laughs> I got appointed to the position. But um, I think the, um, I, I don't know all the reasons for why it was elected, but obviously in this very populous state, we have a number of, mm -hmm. of statewide elected officials, and clearly the decision was made at some point along the way. This just ought to be, um, because so much of the agency work is ministerial, we really don't need to politicize that. And the Secretary of State is the governor's cabinet official really ought to be there to further policy goals for the governor and so that's how I view it. So it seems to work quite well and um, the people in the office help keep the day-to-day -day operations very smooth. You serve, I guess, at the pleasure of the governor. Uh, if Governor Henry is uh, runs again and is reelected, would you uh, intend to stay on as Secretary of State if that was his desire? If that were his desire, I would be delighted to have that conversation with him. It has been uh, such a thrill to work with uh, a governor of his intelligence, his intellect, the innovative way that he he um, addresses the state's problems. He's a lot of energy and he's just so smart and so it's been a great honor for me and when we have that conversation I'll be um, certainly very pleased. What are the chances that we'll ever see your name on a ballot again? Oh, I'll tell you, I, um, I was asked that question quite a lot recently with the, the um, movement of, of the lieutenant governor's off, the opening of the lieutenant mm -hmm. governor and the congressman, et cetera, but I had a great elected job for 10 years as the mayor of Tulsa and it was an enormous privilege to serve. I love serving now in an appointed capacity at a state level. So while I, I never say never, I certainly have no plans at this time or really in the immediate future to even contemplate a run for office. I like, I like um, the flexibility that being an appointed official gives you in addressing such a wide array of, of issues. We're out of time. Secretary of State, thank you thank for being you. here. Thank you. I enjoyed thank the you. conversation very much. Kit and I'll be back with a final word after this. That land next door was a mess. Take more than a lawnmower to revive that land. I heard the oil and natural gas people was cleaning up old oil sites and it wouldn't cost us a flood nickel. Oh yes sir, it was quite a revival. The whole church showed up, want to make a playground for the kids. <laughs> it sure is a blessing. <laughs> Bringing out the best in each student, that is the simple goal and tradition of Heritage Hall. The focus on the individual shapes the educational experience at Heritage Hall. Each student benefits from small classes, able, dedicated teachers, a solid academic curriculum, and exceptional co-curricular programs of athletics, arts, community service, and other activities, parental involvement, personalized counseling, and the development of responsibility, integrity, and love of learning. If you want education taught with pride, then you want Heritage Hall. Welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett and Kent Myers wrapping up a show in which we got to know more about Secretary of State Susan Savage. What a fascinating person. Well, she really is, and she's got a fascinating job. Much more uh, diverse than I would have thought before the show. Mm -hmm. I realized she had to take care of the office out at the Capitol, but I didn't know that she had uh, these additional duties, and I don't see how uh, she uh, gets it all done. I'm sure she's very busy. We're pleased in Oklahoma City, I know, uh, Mayor, to have her now resident of Oklahoma City. We've stolen her at least temporarily from Tulsa, and uh, maybe we can make that permanent. We'll see, but uh, we want to invite her back. Fascinating person, fascinating job. And speaking of fascinating persons and jobs, we're going to have on our next show uh, uh, Congressman Ernest Iztook uh, going to be talking about his job as a congressman and maybe even get into his candidacy a little bit. We'll see. Would, would be interesting. We had the website up there for Susan Savage's office at the Secretary of State's office. It's sos.state.ok.us. And don't forget, theverdict.tv. You can go there and give us an idea about a show you'd like to see 
right here. For Kent Myers, I'm Mick Cornett. See you next week. The preceding program was produced by the Production Services Group at Cox Communications, exclusively for the Cox Channel.